we're at the studio at the Theatre by the Lake in Keswick where we're working on our R&D for the new show that we're making, Nocturnes. For us it's really important to have longer periods like this over a week, ideally. We have technology, we have soundscapes, we have script research to do, character research to do. We have so many layers to the work, so to have the time and the space to fit all of that together, like a big jigsaw in lots of ways, is really helpful. Most of the companies that I work with, people kind of work a bit more individually. People will go away and work on a script or they'll go and work on a sort of design concept and things and then those different departments come together when they've sort of made the things they're going to make. And we really work much more in a way where we're, we're, we're all in the space at the same time. I think it's because that process lets us try stuff and the different things inform each other. If you want to call it the technology or the visuals or the sound or whatever it is, that, that stuff informs what the actors are doing and vice versa. We don't kind of work in isolation. And actually I think the unusual thing about the approach is that everything's there from day one. So, you know, in a more traditional approach, you would, you know, you'd work with the actors for a few weeks and develop that side of things and then you bring the technology or the set or everything else in. I think when the technology and the scenography is so intrinsically linked to the sort of idea and the metaphor of the show, it's really hard to do it apart. So I've always found it very strange with the traditional approach and you say, okay, well, yeah. we'll see you a week before the show opens and you bring all the kit. And all our things are just bound together, you can't pull them apart. You have the ability to try things, you have the luxury to try things, and obviously not everything works. So sometimes you'll, you'll try an idea and you really like it and you want to hold on to it, but it doesn't quite fit in the piece and sort of learning how you remove that official technical rehearsals can take quite a long time. We're kind of always in tech. And I think if other people come in from outside, they find that quite unusual because that can feel like quite a slow process. But the actual decision making is much quicker. It works for us and it certainly works for a lot of people. It's the research and development that gives those ideas and those processes the time to expand and for us all to discuss our way around it, to try things, to put it out there on the set and see what it looks like. Is that going to work? Are we going to go with that? And it gives us the space to create and develop those thoughts and ideas and see what they could be. That's the whole point of R&D, I think. You, you, you have to start day one with, with uh, encouragement and positivity and think, we, we will see what we can get out of this, otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't begin the process. I've been working with the company for more than 10 years now and I think it's about developing a shared language and I think that that's something that we've been fortunate enough to have been able to achieve. Collaboration is a word that gets kind of bandied around quite a lot but I think that imitating the dog and the work that we make and working on more processes like this where we are devising a show from scratch is the result of a genuine collaboration that we all get into the space, all voices are equal, storytelling is what we're all about, storytelling is, is the absolute fundamental point of what we do. So it's not about making pretty pictures, it's not about the projection being dominant hopefully, it's not about the live performance being dominant, it's an exploration genuinely between the relationship between those two mediums, between the recorded and the live. Is this show a new departure for us? I mean, there are a number of reasons for doing this show the way we are doing it. In one way, it marks a move forward, and in another way, it looks back to some of the thematics of other shows. And also, importantly, it's a show which we've done on a very small, tourable scale. We've come at this from a number of different um, perspectives, really. Technically, this is quite a simple show for us. There's one projector, there's probably going to be one computer in the long run that runs it. There's some microphones and there's some, you know, in-ear monitors. That's, that's it. Which, compared to a show like The Train, the last piece that we made where there were, you know, I can't remember how many projectors, a lot. Media servers, all sorts of stuff going on. M massive pieces of moving scenery. <laughs> this, this is quite a, quite a simple, technical piece. And actually that's quite exciting because I think the devil's in the detail and we can like get right into the detail with it. 
I think in some ways it is a reaction to the last show in a way, yeah. isn't it? Because the last piece was cinematic. The train. The train in an environmental way in a sense. So the audience were in a truck and we moved them around and we had this landscape that they moved through. Whereas in this piece, the landscape is sort of within the film itself. So there's a relationship between the screen, the fiction that we're presenting, and the on-stage negotiation of that fiction, the interaction with it. So there's, in a way, I think it is almost, we're going back very much to look at some very particular questions about some of the things we've dealt with before, but in a very different way. And I think it is a big departure in that sense. So we're doing a showing tonight and tomorrow, and there's no pressure to finalise anything. It is just showing our ideas, and sometimes they can be a bit chaotic while we work out exactly what they are. But even that can be very interesting to watch. I find it really useful bringing a live audience in to R&D. You can work in a real bubble, and just because something makes sense to you when it's really close to you and you've been living with it for months on end, people from the outside world <laughs> come and see this thing that you've made and it, it's total nonsense. Or it can have that risk because everyone in the bubble understands it and understands what's going on and understands the process and that doesn't always translate to a good piece of work. So I think having people, different people, from different walks of life coming to see the work at the end, not just people who are other theatre practitioners or whatever it might be, but having a, a kind of as broad a spectrum as possible is really useful. I'm really interested to know, in a very general way, what the, where the audience might think it's going. If they say something, but it's something about identity and it's not clear who's in control and it's not clear who's running what and, and not get the relationship, then, then, then I think we've, we're on to a beginning that works. People want people to be also really deeply engaged with the piece. Moved. Moved. We all have a, you know, film is ubiquitous, isn't it? So we're really engaged and we invest in these narratives. And we invest in the histories that this piece is drawing from. I think it's also to do something new. For us and for also for an audience, for an audience to yeah. go, that's, you know, that's, that's different. I've not seen that before. I think that's really important to us. 